Well, hello, listener. Thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Jock and Nerd podcast. The Black Panther hype is building after crazy positive early reactions from the premiere. Wesley Snipes almost made a Black Panther movie in the 90s, and it's a good thing he didn't, listener. And I finally figured out what I hate about today's rappers. Plus, we break down the first trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp, try to figure out why they're making another Superman prequel series, and PETA is trying to ruin more things from my childhood. Plus, Ronda Rousey joins the WWE, listener shoutouts and comments, and of course, our patented nerd. tangents and non-sequiturs. Yeah, the whole show is pretty much one long non-sequitur, all in this edition of the Jockin' Nerd Weekly for Thursday, February 1st, 2018. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. Jockin', be nerdin'. Be funny, disturbing. Jockin', be nerdin'. Be spoiler alert. Hey, 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 listener, what's up? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Jock and Nerd. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And he's the rug boy right over there in the corner. Good earth to your rugs. How's it going? Somebody touching my linguine. No, no. Somebody touching my spaghetti. That's the wrong pasta. I prefer rugs. linguine. Oh, nice a linguine. A little nice linguine. A little manicot. A gabagool. Master chol. A little master chol. <laughs> All of this. It's very good. It's a lot of carbs. Fettuccine. You got to take a nap. Fettuccine. <laughs> got to take a Alfredo. Don't forget the Alfredo sauce. No, it's Alfred. Alfred. <laughs> Somebody touching my Alfred. <laughs> You just gotta cut the word off at the end. <laughs> Listen, listener, nobody has touched my spaghetti for years. Oh shit! If you know what I mean. Yeah. Welcome to no the show. Hey, you guys, let's play a little game of finish the sentence. All right, rugs, you go first. Finish the sentence. If you are a new listener to the Jock and Nerd podcast, comma, go to the Jock and Nerd Nation on Facebook. I guess that's fine. I thought you were. Let me try this, with Anthony. Anthony. Finish this sentence. If this is the first time you are listening to the Jock and Nerd podcast, comma. Go find something better to do. Okay, that, that's better. <laughs> right. Thanks. That's more what I was looking for. Let me throw it back to you. Uh, finish this sentence. If this is the first time you are listening to the Jock and Nerd podcast, comma. Are you talking to me now? Yeah. New shoe. Uh News, interviews, <laughs> uh, I don't know, whatever we choose, shoes. Uh, okay, that's no. Anthony, Say the got, Jews. The, Anthony got the joke better. Have if fun with are, the Jews. Have fun with the, what? If what? you are, if this is the first time you're checking out this show, listener, that somewhere, like me, somewhere in life, you took a wrong turn. And yeah. I ended up here because that's exactly you how I ended up here. paint chips as a child, if you're listening to you this. You may have had asbestos in your house growing up. I'm not sure, but we're glad you're here. We're glad you press play. What you will get is comic book and superhero uh, you TV You know, sometimes I'm reviews. not even glad I'm here. Really? Yeah. Me Sorry. too. I was just telling him <laughs> when. You fucking bastards. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> but look, as a new listener, the most important thing you could do right now is subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts. Listen wherever you want. You can find the show so many places. Just visit the website, jockandair.com, for all the... Wherever there's podcasts, search us, you'll find us. But... Do us this one solid. Subscribe and Apple Podcasts. Let's fool Apple into thinking we're better than we are. I would love for that to happen. Uh, this show, here's what we're going to do. Uh, Anthony's progress on the Black Mirror is nil. Zero. Ah. Last episode, if you want to check out, we uh, talked about the, the pilot, the first episode of Black Mirror. I instead watched half of the new Chappelle, which isn't so new. Oh, you didn't even watch all of that yet? No. Jeez, he's, he's slow. That's fine. We're going at Anthony's he's, place. I'm, with the, I'm, I'm slow he's playing. He's got to have a girlfriend or something. That's what it is. <laughs> something so is slowing is down his game. On. Get your hand off my penis! It's something you're probably I'm not get, saying. Am I, am, I, am I even in the vicinity of being warm, Anthony? Uh, no, he's not answering. Maybe. Okay, that's, that's, that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a confirmative affirmative. He's like, action. he's doing the Stormy Daniels uh, answering method. <laughs> no comment. Look, 
That's fine. This is what we got this show. We got a bunch of news. I still have programmed a wonderful, enjoyable, geek-worthy show for the listener. Don't worry, anyone. But before we get to all that, I got a big announcement here. Big show announcement. Uh, regarding our merch. Yes, we have merch. Oh, yeah. We've had, had merch. We've had merch. We have had merch. Uh, but we got a new storefront for merch. If you visit jockinner.com slash shop right now, you will see our brand new storefront with a bunch of different designs and options. Check it out. Here's what we got real quick. Let me know what you guys think of these designs. Of course, we have the podcast logo shirt, this time including Rugboy. Oh, I'm on it? Yes, Rugboy wow. is on. Click the link, check these out. I don't out. know how that happened. Someone so, <laughs> should have been checking, double checking these before they went to print. It got accepted into the program. I've uh, never had my own shirt before. Yes, and there's a bunch of varieties. You can get a, a V-neck, a hoodie, a sweatshirt. Uh, we have that one. We have a shirt that simply one color stamp says Rugboy approved with a fun drawing of Rugboy. It says the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Drawing, that's him. Yeah, that is it's him. like a photograph. That's, uh, sorry, that's not a drawing. There's also a reverse of that, so you could buy it on a light shirt in one color black or a, on a colored shirt, and I've reversed it, so it's like a white circle. You and need then, to buy this shirt. Are you describing, going to describe one by one the shirts right now? Yes. Yeah, just, okay. <laughs> okay. There's only one more left. <laughs> Finally, there's one. The last design is our special spoiler time this design. It's Rugboy with a word bubble, and it says this. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Ah, classic. You can wear that. And there's also a censored version because what do you guys think? Would you buy a shirt with the word fuck on it? Uh, I, uh, I didn't know. Now that I'm sure. 30, no. No. So, okay. So you wouldn't at 30, but if you were younger, you would wear this? No, probably not. So that's why I have a version where it's uh, censored and uh, there's a couple of asterisks uh, replacing letters. So it's not, but you still know what the word is. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see if you're brave enough to wear a shirt. Uh, says, I think uh, all of our listeners in the South would wear it with the F. Yes. <laughs> I designed that shirt for below the Bible belt. Yeah, everybody. the guy, uh, Anthony, what was it, from Blab? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, what was it, Anthony Davis? Is that Anthony his name? Davis. Yeah, yeah. He's, he'll rock one of those. He's totally with, wearing yeah, a shirt with yeah. swear Visit words. Visit yeah. slash shop. So this, uh, this new shop, the prices for T-shirts are a little bit cheaper. The old shop is still live. You can go and get just the normal How logo. How do you go to the old shop? Well, here's why. Visit jockandnerd.com slash spreadshirt. It's still up there. The old shop has more accessories, mm -hmm. like phone cases and water bottles and stuff. And there's way more options in terms of, like, you can mix and match ringer tee, color, collars. These are sh cheaper shirts. These are a little bit cheaper shirts. And they have me on them. And well, they have Rugboy. Yes. I will say that I had feedback from my friends, and they were all going to buy well, get out of here. my shirts that were uh, the Spreadshirt. Okay, ones. they can but still buy those. No, no, well, they said their feedback was we would buy it, but it's a little too expensive. So ah. this is now a cheaper it's version. A, it's, a, it's a couple of bucks Just cheaper. as good a quality. Yes, I, don't, I hope. I don't, well, I don't know these. Here's the thing. Uh, the Sunfrog, everything's made in America. So it's a made in USA product. Oh, gosh. Well, Perfect then. for Trump's America. All right, now we're going too far. <laughs> Let's is, move on. I don't, need, I don't want anything in Bangladesh, so yes. I'm no. just saying the quality is good. Check it I out. Want little, I want little people making them. If you <laughs> little tiny like yes, like I want little tiny hands, the puppet hands. Oh, making them. These shirts were entirely made by puppets, and they were paid in appropriate wage. Look, you can wear rug boy. That's the big news. Visit jockandnerd.com slash shop. Uh, check out our new merch, and it will we will be adding designs. If you have an idea, if you have a suggestion for a quote or something we say that you want to see on a shirt. Let us know. I can throw it up there. It's real easy to throw up designs. It should be a lot of fun. Ever-growing line. Okay. Let's get to the news, you bastards. The Jock, Jock and Ned Podcast. Get in touch with the show. Get involved. Send us your t-shirt ideas. Just visit jockandnerd.com slash contact. You can follow our Twitter account. You can like our Facebook page. You can send us your voice and send audio it. comment. Send it. Sigs inside. Hashtag. Uh, and you could join our awesome Facebook community, the Jock and Nerd Nation. Jock and Nerd. Where uh, conversations continue, go back and forth from the show. On the daily. On the daily. It's growing. There's like 145 people in there. I got to welcome this week, Chris Marin joining Phil Rude, who is a podcaster. On uh, He has a show called Brokebot Mountain, and we do sketching comedy together. Blazing Caribou Studios, Chaz Hubbard, great name, Rumberto Rivera. Whoa. This is like if Rugboy oh. and Jess Rivera had a baby. Yes. He would be called Rumberto Rivera. Rumberto. And, and Mike Sangregorio, who is another podcaster, he used to do Geek Chorus. He's on Sketch Prov 
podcast, Chaz. Chaz says, love the podcast. Been listening for a couple of years. Oh, shit. Can you believe someone can now comment? I've been listening for a couple of years to this. Can, do you guys? Wow. Can you guys even? I, that blew me away. That yeah, you you called me when I you was saw like, it. "What the fuck? Look at what he just said. That's crazy." That's unbelievable. Um, you wasted a lot of time, bro. That's a lot of hours, stupidity. <laughs> you wasted a lot of time. You may have permanent brain damage. I would yeah. just get it checked. I would go to the doctor. Maybe an MRI chest. I don't know. Let us know. Chris Marin also wrote, thanks, Somebody guys. touch on my spaghetti. Somebody. Somebody touch on my spaghetti. Chris Marin says, thanks, guys. Longtime listener to about 13 months. Listen to each, Why? E- e- listen to each episode at the gym. Uh, I'm old school. Used to run a UK DVD review website, dvddebate.com, between 2000 and 2005. And that site is still active. A lot of people listen to us at the gym. That's also weird. Well, that's the time to do it. We got a lot of in-shape nerds. We got a lot of jocks with nerds inside. Everyone listening at the gym, give me uh, 12 front rack reverse lunges right now. Grunt real loud for everyone. Yes. That's what I like to hear at the gym. Oh, I love it. I love when guys j- grunt real loud at the gym and just throw their weights on the ground. That's I, awesome. I think okay if you're yeah. if you're at the gym every lift every rep rep you should end with this. Jogging nerd. You do a bench press and you go. Jogging nerd. Another bench press. Jogging nerd. You get the idea. Do you know about this a whole fake weight epidemic that's happening? What? Shake weight. I fake like the shake. What's what's fake There's weight? There's all these YouTube videos of like all these bodybuilders and they're like. Like, oh, this guy put up 600 pounds, but they're all using fake weights. Oh, shit, like, it's not real? No, and it's like an epidemic, and people are, like, all over the place doing this shit, and they're using fake weights. Oh, man, I used to love those videos of guys deadlifting, like, yeah. 600 pounds. Well, it's, it's not real. It's Fugazi. Fuck those guys. It's fucking right. Fugazi. Let's get to, uh, let's talk Black Panther, people. Holy shit. Geek boner. We are two weeks away. From Black Panther, which means are we? It's, no, aren't we next week? Oh no, two weeks. You're right. Two weeks away, which means it is danger zone time for spoilers. Yeah, Emron, don't spoil us. I will kill you. I'm not gonna spoil. You spoiled things on the show for me that I didn't. I ask may to be spoil spoiled. something. Don't. I'll try not to. It may happen. Imran I can't doesn't promise. Care. I said this at the beginning. Before yeah. we start recording, show, we said, uh, "Look, the, <laughs> it, the the movie pr- has premiered, and we have early reaction. These aren't spoilery reactions. So, uh, but." The producer, and I've heard a lot of people say this, that this is like the James Bond of the MCU. And I love that comparison. We haven't had like a James Bond, like spy agent espionage kind of full thing yet. Oh. What do you think? You think that's a, is he a misogynist? Well, like maybe. James Bond? <laughs> no, he's a good and racist. He's a like James good, Bond. He's a politically correct James Bond. Oh, okay. Ah. I thought you meant he was a misogynist racist. That's what no, usually comes. Not. You say James Bond. That's the first thing people say. A womanizer. Yes, that is the yeah. first thing that comes. Uh, to I didn't think James Bond. I didn't think they were going that way. So, I mean, I, that's kind of cool. Like he's got gadgets. There's like spy shit. You know, we read about that. We heard about that little casino scene. So, uh, but you know, one thing you can't argue that this is going to be a cultural phenomenon, man. This thing is going to be huge. So. I'm going to tell you five things uh, that the first reactions tell us about this movie. And it's from an article titled Five Things the First Reactions Tell Us (laughs) About the Latest Marvel Studios Movie (laughs) from comicbookmovie.com. These are not spoilery, but they're really, they're going to get you geeked. Uh, Number one, Michael B. Jordan's Eric Killmonger isn't your typical Marvel villain. I hope he doesn't suck. He doesn't suck. He won't be killed and be not memorable. He will be someone, hopefully, to, to compete with Loki, you know, as the, the best uh, MCU villain yet. That's exciting. I like that. I like Michael B. Jordan. Hopefully yeah. they don't waste him like they've wasted tons of good actors and actresses right? and in, villain in roles. These, in these villain roles. You're like, wait a minute. That was that guy, and they just killed him. Uh, number two, there are two post-credit scenes. So just so you know, of course, nobody leaves a Marvel movie, but confirmed. There's still assholes scenes. that leave, and I don't get it. It's like, what, do you live under a rock? You know that these things have post credit scenes. They're like, I'll just check it out on the internet later. But why? When you no, can just watch it now? I actually think there are people that don't realize. That really? Post- yeah, I think I'll so. I'll be not caught on to this in, in nine years of uh, watching these movies. Ten years. Interesting. Uh, number three, the women steal the show. And like I mentioned on the show before, man, I'm really excited for Shuri. And uh, I guess the uh, the rest of the women are going to be amazing. That's exciting. That's like good. That. Yeah. There was a lot of strong women, female uh, African American actresses, and actresses and characters, and Shuri being smarter than Tony Stark. I can't wait to see that. Uh, number four, it respects T'Challa's African roots. Awesome. You would expect that from a Black Panther movie. Well, that goes without saying, right? Right. You would hope so. I mean, 
All yeah, the you, ingredients are there. You you would that'd be a, a royal fuck up if you didn't. Like that's <laughs> the first it. thing you got to get right. You just you tune in and it's like coming to America. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's oh, just yeah. he's the Prince of Zamunda. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, over the top uh, bullshit. Uh, I still the, love that movie anyway. That's oh, a, it's great a great movie. movie. It's a great movie. Every time it's on, I watch it. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing, number five, the movie is fucking awesome. Geek Mooner. Holy crap. Some of this is like, I can't, I don't want to go into this <laughs> like, being like, I, I, this like is around, the best. I like how you're like, they, they, the fifth point is, this movie is fucking awesome. And you're like, oh my God, that's mind blowing that it's awesome. Holy shit. <laughs> but this is going to say it's awesome. Oh my God. But well, I've heard everyone say this. Yeah. You I know, think and, it is good. I think it will be good. I think it'll be fine. I think but it's going to be a good think, movie. I mean, I love Marvel films. Don't get me wrong. Right. Every Marvel movie, movie pre, pre-release pre is fucking awesome, according to all the critics. And it's yeah. the best MCU movie yes. yet. We've heard that it's the best movie ever from every Marvel movie. So, yeah. so my, kind of my problem is I don't want to get like set up to go into this well, thing expecting the best MCU movie. Like, don't. No, go I'm on not, expecting I'm, yes. it's going to be like it's Doctor gonna, Strange. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think you can go into this um, with good high expectations because of the cast and because of the fact that it is Black Panther and that it's you got Ryan Coogler I think is a really good director yeah. doing this so I think I think you can go in with some like pretty good expectations for this I think if you go in like Ant Man Doctor Strange you like you know like that's the base yeah that's like the the like the mid level Marvel movie that's like okay they're they're good movies they're not nothing's really terrible I think about if those we movies. go in thinking that I think we'll really be blown yeah. away though because I think this movie is so much more. Uh, in terms of what we don't know is going to happen. If, if you're thinking it's going to be like the most mind blowing movie in the world, you know, you're, you're setting yourself up to kind of be a little disappointed. Well, nothing is going to live up to that. Yeah, Come exactly. On. So but they got to stop with this hyperbole. So Coogler and Michael B. Jordan. First of all, I found out Ryan Coogler is 31 years old. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> him and Michael B. Jordan sounds like they're three for three uh, in terms of making good movies with the Fruitvale Station and the Creed. And three really different movies. Like, uh, that's pretty cool. That's a good yeah, team. Yeah, Creed was really good. Yeah, so sounds like I enjoyed I mean, it. the guy. Uh, the guy's uh, uh, he's hitting his peak. Uh, so uh, I can't wait. Uh, in terms of pre-sales, Fandango, Fandango's Eric Davis revealed today that Black Panther is now the king of pre-ticket sales. With two weeks left before it hits theaters, Black Panther is outpacing every other superhero movie ever made. In ticket pre-sales. Really? Yes. Oh, it's top wow. of war, and it's now taken up uh, beat Batman v Superman. Dawn it's definitely going to do well. That's without a doubt. This is a February movie. Like, if this thing makes like 130, 140 million opening weekend, that's uh, insane for like a February movie. I know people that are don't watch MCU movies just from the trailers. They're like, tell me about this movie. What? This looks really awesome. So it's gonna, it's got a wide reach. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Can't wait. Now, I'll tell you who uh, may not be excited for this movie is a guy, a bunch of DC fans who set up a Facebook group to uh, sabotage the Black Panther <laughs> Rotten Tomato score. I, I on... hate that you even find these things and I put know. these on here. No, this I'm saying, I mean, but they, like you, you, if you look hard enough, you can yes. find stuff like this for anything. Yeah, but this is uh, it's uh, this thing has been everywhere this week, and I think it's really? hilarious. You think it's everywhere? I, I bet it won't even put a dent into anything. No, and that's the, well, that's the point. This group is taking uh, responsibility for tanking the Last Jedi score. This is apparently so why is it okay? It says anti Disney fan group, but then it yeah. says then an, alt right Facebook group. <laughs> so you're tell, a, telling me that people hate Marvel are are uh, Nazis? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, i uh, it's close. I wouldn't know. I'm just uh, trying to get a handle on what I this, uh, I, It says, all right, that's hilarious that they, uh, th no, that's a different, oh, maybe that's the same story. I don't know. Look, there's a Facebook page that's called Down with Disney's Treatment of Franchises and it's fanboys. <laughs> and they've made a Facebook group on a certain event. They're all going to give the movie a bad score to tank it see, the like, day it comes I, out. This is the stupidest thing. I don't thing. see the reasoning behind this. This is just fucking asinine. Like, there's no reason, like, Black Panther is just doing what Black Panther is doing. There's, like, there's no, like, controversy on the casting, on anything. Like, there's no, no, no controversy to to protest or to get, to get pissed about. 
So what? What is it? It's stupid. It's them thinking that Disney pays off critics to give DC yes. shitty rotten this is tomatoes. It's kind scores. of like an anti-corporate <laughs> fucking anonymous bullshit. Like, I gotta kind understand of thing. if like there was like uh, something like really weird, like uh, all of a sudden Captain America and every other Marvel character is now black in the Black Panther movie, <laughs> and like uh, you're like okay, that's that's fucked up. <laughs> But they're not doing anything like that. Nothing. Not, there's no controversy in anything in this movie. Here's what the guy says. I feel it's time to strike back at all those under Disney and bring down the House of Mouse's actions for paying off the critics that hurt DC Comics on film and for other parties this affected by them. This is sauce. This is ridiculous. So they took a, a response. They're claiming credit for the Star Wars, which still made over a billion dollars. So clearly it did nothing. 3,700 people have said they're going. 1,800 said I've said they're interested and uh, Rotten Tomatoes uh, uh, had a response, and they said, we at Rotten Tomatoes are proud to have become a platform for passionate fans to debate. While we respect our fans' diverse opinions, we do not condone hate speech. Our team of security network social experts continue to closely monitor our platforms. Uh, that's all they had to say, but this is just, uh, I just thought it was hilarious. It's pretty silly. I feel like you can find this for Let's anything. move on. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Speaking let's, of, let's see what uh, happens. Let's, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, great, there's a great article I just want to uh, share with you guys from the Hollywood Reporter uh, about Wesley Snipes talking a little bit about what his idea was going to be for a Black Panther movie in the '90s. You guys, you guys know that he was I trying to make a movie, that. right? Yeah. yeah, for a long time. That would in have the been 90s. awful. I think it would have been. It just wasn't the right time. Uh, all you know, all you had was uh, '78 Superman, '89 Batman. And uh, wait a minute, I think it should have happened. Well, he they, there was a lot of script issues and Wesley Slipes loves his character. But the people he was pitching in terms of writing and directing, they didn't get what Black Panther was. They kept going back to like the Black Panthers, like the revolutionary group. <laughs> right. So right. Uh, Mario Van Peoples was attached at once, but he only had a conversation with John Singleton. Uh, and they actually talked about. Uh, making this movie. Uh, so Wesley told John, he's like, he told him his vision of the film being close to what we're going to get, like the whole world of Africa being a hidden, highly technological advanced society. Wesley loved the comics. But Singleton's like, it says here, John was like, nah, see, he's got the spirit of the Black Panther, but he's trying to get his son to join the civil rights activist organization. He and his son have a problem and they have some strife because he's trying to be politically correct. So they tried to politicize it yes. into an American and, thing. Yes. And so, and and for a costume, he said he would just wear a leotard with some little ears. That That's what he had in mind for the costume. This would have been horrible. You can't yeah. do this in the 90s. It was not. Well, I think that they should have made a Black Panther movie with, with Wesley Snipe in the 90s, just not this one. No. Yeah. But then uh, eventually all these efforts turned into the Blade movie. Right. Kind of. Which what, is awesome. Yeah. He learned the stuff he which, learned from that. Which you can kind of credit for the modern era. Yeah. Just a reju restarting the, the era or putting life into the modern superhero era. In the, two, in the what was that, 2000, late 90s? 98, I think. 98. Yeah. 98, yeah. 98, yeah. It was a movie. It was a superhero Marvel movie. Yeah. And, and it was serious. And it. It took itself to a certain degree serious, and it had good action in it, and it was, it was cool. And most people didn't know that it was a Marvel comic book film when they first saw it. Yeah, and it didn't matter. It's a movie about vampires. Yeah, they're like Wesley Snipes is the badass fucking vampire hunter, fucking Daywalker. He's still open to doing another Blade movie, and he's like, I'll do whatever they want in Marvel. He should. Yeah, I I would love to see him as like an older Blade passing on the mantle to like the next generation, or maybe he is like. The Chris Christopherson character in the Blade movies, like he's their mentor. Uh, the guy behind the chair, maybe. That would be awesome. Anyways, I check like it, it out. I'll put this uh, article. It's a great interview with him. Hollywood Reporter. Uh, check out the show notes. Shockandnerd.com slash 206. Uh, and we have Kendrick Lamar, who is producing the yeah. soundtrack. Uh, you're a big fan of Kendrick Lamar, Anthony. I do like Kendrick Lamar. He's finally released uh, the date. This thing's coming out February 9th. And he's released the full track list. And I wanted to read these names because I don't know these people, but reading uh, hip hop today's names are hilarious. <laughs> let Anthony, let me know if you know any of these people. Uh, well, uh, first of all, there's a song called Black Panther from Kendrick Lamar. So oh, no shit. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a gimme. There's a song from Kendrick Lamar and SZA. SZA. Yeah, I've heard of yeah, that. Yeah, that's a woman. <clears throat> all the Stars, yeah. which I've heard. It's a very good track. It's on the Spotify playlist. Okay, who is Schoolboy Q, 2 Chains, and Saudi? Well, I know who two chains. You don't know who two chains. I know two chases. 
Schoolboy Q's been around for a little bit too. And like the whole nation of Saudi Arabia is on this track. Yes, yes. The fuck is Saudi? Is he an Arab dude at least? I don't know who Saudi is. Mm. Khalid Sway Lee. I know Khalid. Khalid, yeah, he's got I've seen a hit him. song out. Vince Staples, Yugen Blackrock. I've heard of Vince Staples, yeah. Georgia Smith or no. Yor, Yorha? That I know. I've J O R J A. Uh, what is this? Nope. S O B X R B E. I don't know who that is. What is that? Absol Anderson dot James Blake. I've heard of Anderson dot Park. I don't know if they. I don't even know how you. If that's how you say it, but yeah. Are we just gonna do this? You're gonna name people and then yeah. gonna tell you whether he knows them. Yeah. Are, any, are any of these people? This good? This is what Imran thinks is entertaining. But let's yeah, keep going. <laughs> are any of these people good? The thing is, like, have most of our audience is like Imran. We've heard of these people. <laughs> have they? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sure if they listen to shitty music, they know it all. <laughs> no, just kidding. Speaking of, okay. I, I mean, want... you, you got here. Here's some names you would probably know. Yeah. Future's on here. Oh, I like yeah. Future. Travis Scott, The Weeknd. Uh, These are all people oh, you I should know probably know if you're, if you're into pop culture right now. The Weeknd, he's got that big crazy hairdo. Yes. I like that. Uh, quick sidebar. I watched the Grammys this year yeah, for let some me reason. Say, let me comment on this, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most Marvel, first off, most Marvel soundtracks are, are nothing to write home about anyways. Right, right. So- the fact that you've got big name hip hop artists on here, yeah. Whether you think the music's good or not, I think this is just awesome for like the movie. I think. I mean, what I mean, a, you've got yeah, the, whole, the you, demographic yeah. that yeah. that the younger demographic that's going to be into this shit. It's great, and it's it's you also know? cool to see like major you know hip hop names kind of jumping on board to a movie called Black Panther like that. that Kendrick cool. Lamar, multiple Grammy winner, just the other night like producing this thing and. I mean, and actually, the bigger point is, I think some of this music is actually pretty good. Like, hey, it's, man, it's no know? Judgment Night soundtrack, but dude, you know. the Judgment Night soundtrack is the best <laughs> thing in the fucking world. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Independent rock mixed up with hip hop on each track. Oh, Should, it's so, g- give me the so Space Jam or the Lion King soundtrack, and I'll still <laughs> I will still put those on repeat. Aladdin's not bad. Aladdin's great too. Any of the early Disney movies? Give me that. Uh, no, uh, that's why I was really like impressed. They got Kendrick Lamar to curate and produce this fucking soundtrack. So back to the sidebar. I, for some reason, I watched the Grammys. I haven't watched the Grammys in years. It was just odd. There was not, you guys watch any of it? Have you, did no. you see anything? No? Zero. No, I had no interest in the Grammys. Fuck them. Uh, yeah, it was, it was whatever. I do want to call out the opening, though, because uh, it was Kendrick Lamar, a little bit of U2, and Dave Chappelle. Oh, shit. In a crazy, powerful, weird, funny performance. Like he would do a, a, a song, he's doing a song and it just stops and it cut to Dave. And Dave's just like, hi there, I'm Dave Chappelle. <laughs> and he said some shit and it cut back and it cuts back to Dave. Uh, it was crazy. Very powerful, but uh, everyone's telling me I would love Kendrick Lamar. His uh, that album Damn was up against Jay-Z for everything. And it was good. I enjoyed it, but there's still something about current hip hop that really bugs me. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not old. No, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's just the, yeah. to me. I think that the 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 flow is very. Everybody sounds the same, yes. and the rhymes are really weak, and they're just repeating the same words over and over again a lot. So I found this article from Ambrosia for Heads, which is a pretty great website if you're into like hip hop. You, you guys school. remind me of all the old guys that think everything in their era was awesome. <laughs> And everything now. I'm not wow. saying that. I'm saying it is That's how it is with every old guy. Everything. Don't, don't get me wrong does sound the same is exactly uh correct which is that's what i've been feeling and i want to play look i'm going to play a minute of this video because a minute dude yes, not a just, minute come no, on just listen it it succinctly explains exactly and there's a great clip from snoop dogg that explains why what's oh, bugging snoop me dogg. about today's music if you listen to mainstream music these days, you know this rap flow. Look, I might just chillin' some babe. I might just chill with your boo. I pull up in Rory's and shit. With choppers and Harleys and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm young and rich and plus I'm yeah, bullshit. Yeah, doing triplets. I'm stupid so I keep the oozy. I'm only yellow on me. I need my answers to match me. They not the macho like Randy. The chopper go out for granted. If you love it, you're in luck. It's probably not going away anytime soon. If you hate it, I'm sorry. But hey, you have something in common with Snoop Dogg now. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. That rapid fire style of rap has been dubbed the Migos flow, even the Versace flow. It's come to define mainstream artists in recent years. 
That's pretty All much right, it. Yeah. It's the Migos flow. And it's the triplets. It's That's the what triplets. It is. It's, and they, they trace that's it. That's been around since Bone Thugs. Well, they trace it back to Chuck D uh, in the right. video. They say where it starts. But that's just supposed to be like, you do that a little bit in a song. You know, the whole song is like that. And then every song is like that. When I heard that, I was like, that's it. That's what bugs me about hip hop these days. Is I don't it, think Kendrick Lamar sounds like that. A little bit he does. Oh, he does it too. A yeah, he does. He, he might does do the it, triplet. It's Drake well. does it. Drake does it. Yeah. I heard Drake do it. And I'm like, everybody's doing this shit. I'm like, it acting like it's new. I know. But, it's I don't know. Yeah. Do you <laughs> like new the, flow? It's Drake's flow. Do you, Anthony, what do you do you like the Migos flow? Hey, if you throw that on at a bar or a club, I'm going, <laughs> I'm getting down. You know to what it, it is? I'll get, tell you what uh, it is. Okay. It's this it's it's the new trap beats that they have. Like it goes well with that flow it does so it sounds it ah. syncs up really well oh uh, i see back in the day they were doing it not to the trap beat they were doing it to the the standard rap beats with the different drums right right it's so so these are they're yeah. syncopated differently so the edm that's, that's is kind of in, influence the uh the style no, not necessarily yeah. EDM, it makes it just, just makes it more catchy yeah it's 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 yeah, exactly. It's catchy it's it's, it's more, bouncy it's bouncy it's, it's bouncy it's more to move around and dance to yeah but everybody it's easily doesn't. digestible because white people it's just not original because <laughs> white shit. suburban kids need that shit to be easily digestible. <laughs> yeah, they should be challenged. But yeah, it's like I can write that. It's easy. Yeah, it's fucking it's easy. Like, I'm writing a song that tomorrow. <laughs> like my mother and father are assholes. <laughs> Strippers were tassels. Yeah, so like <laughs> Batman, Batman, Batman. <laughs> I heard you married a Porsche. All right, let's get to this Ant-Man and the Wasp trailer. Geek boner. Uh, for this movie that's coming out in- uh, I can't believe we didn't start with this. July. Uh, this was, uh, this this got me really geeked, dude. Uh, opening thoughts. What do you guys think overall? We we got a good look. It's They don't give you a lot of story, but they give you the feel. And I really dug this trailer. Anthony, your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be another fun movie. I think, uh, you know, there's nothing- too meaty in here. You do see the wasp a little bit, um, but overall, I think, especially coming off of Infinity War, I think this will be again like Ant Man came off of uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. It's like a nice little break from to palate world cleanser ending stakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's just another. It looks like it's just, it, they're not trying to hit a home run. They're just trying to make a fun movie. You know what though? The first movie, if you think about it, that's like, that movie's a lot of fun. It's very rewatchable. It's kind of a surprise. Nobody was expecting anything, and I really. I really enjoyed it. I'm, uh, this seems to be more of the same rugs. Does this get you excited for this movie? Yeah, I think they're holding back a lot. Yeah. So, like, they're not really going to play all their cards. You're going to have Michelle Pfeiffer as Jenna Van Dyne. Yeah, yeah we didn't that. see her. You got, they're, they're, they're withholding a little bit of they, stuff. You got Lawrence Fishburne as, uh, what is he called? Bill Foster. You get Goliath. a quick shot of Bill Foster. You see Michael Pena running for a second. Right. Uh, but either you said there's not a lot in here. I would disagree, man. There's, there's a lot to tell us about things. I was saying like plot wise. Well, plot wise. Yeah. yeah. But there's in terms a lot of, of cool visuals. Well, yeah. there's a lot of cool visuals uh, in terms of hints for what to expect. Uh, one great Easter egg is the the trailer. I love the trailer. It's scored to a song called Ants Invasion by Adam and the Ants. I love that. That's great. Now I did laugh out loud when the Pez was being thrown oh, at people. Oh, dude, what a great tag. Giant Pez dispenser coming at you, just like the Thomas the Tank engine in the first movie. Right. They really do a good job with like what they make big and small and, and making it have visual impact. Right. So you see scenes from the Civil War battle again in another movie, like we saw him in Spider-Man. Now we're seeing him here. Okay, it's a little callback. That's kind of cool in black and white, but this is what I found out. This is very interesting. This movie takes place right after Civil War, but before Infinity War. Mm, that's going to confuse the fuck out of people unless they put some uh, dates in there. Well, here's the thing. Uh, also, Captain Marvel is set in the 90s. So these two movies, Infinity War and Captain Marvel are between the Avengers 3 and 4, right? So you can't really fuck with what's going on in the main timeline. I think this is a really smart way to... Uh, and, you can, and you won't give away if anybody's dead or alive yeah. or if anybody survives. As and, an MCU nerd, I was yeah. like, how could this be happening in Infinity exactly. Wars also? Exactly. Like, when, this was nothing. This means nothing at right. this point. And I thought, oh, well, we know then all these people survive Infinity War. Right. But then I looked into it, and the trailer, the scenes from Civil War... Seem to imply this movie takes place right after the Civil War, and we is, find. Did out, you read this, or you're implying this? This is what everyone is saying. Uh, this oh. I did read this. Okay. 
uh, that Ant Man Two is before in- Infinity War in the MCU timeline. Uh, Scott's under house arrest. I love like how we found out why Wasp wasn't there because he just didn't call her. Uh, I have to say though, the portable, the office building shrinking with the uh, <laughs> the, the luggage. luggage handles. Yeah. This science of this made my head hurt, and really don't think about it because. Oh, don't think about. Oh that. my God! Do you first of all, what is everything like nailed down? Were there people in there? Did everything get shook? Was the handle giant on top of the building the whole time? Oh, Imran, you could you, you're going to start hurting yourself. Oh my if you God! Think about I, this. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. It, it, it's ridiculous. I can't think about that. But it's like, it's a great. It's a gag. It's such a great gag. Do, do you? It up. I mean, is this stuff you think about when you read comics back in the day? Don't think about sometimes. That. Yeah, that's true. Like, how did he get there? Uh, but here's a little cool thing you see already. See where he's um, when he's big and he's coming out of the water in front of the boat. Uh, Walt Goggins, who's playing an evil CEO, you see a shot of him on the boat holding the building. Uh, so I thought that was kind of neat. You see a raft that they have now that's going to go through the quantum realm. Very exciting. We get to see the quantum realm, and there's a uh, water bear, water bears, tardigrades. Remember, Adam Morris loved, turned us onto the tardigrades. I hopefully this. So the criticisms of the first movie were that obviously the first criticism was that what's his face didn't direct it. Everyone, uh, everyone Edgar Wright, Edgar Wright. Yeah, this Edgar Wright, is Peyton but, Reed again, right? But the other things were like that it was kind of just formulaic in terms of it followed the Tony Stark path of yeah, this yeah. this guy that kind of sucks and then redeems himself yeah, um, yeah. and then it, there was also the criticism that uh they they didn't go far enough into the wackiness like with all that they like still kept it like standard marvel we saw the quantum uh, you know. realm for like a movie, second yeah, yeah it was like, a heist, heist movie. movie so hopefully this movie they, now that they've gotten the origin stuff out of the way they can really stretch their legs and, and just go crazy it still seems like a rom-com heist buddy now, cop thing you know do you miss the haircut on evangeline lily or do you like the long hair? I like hair? this look better. Yeah. Yeah, she looks okay, okay dude. I, I don't, in real, like, who, who really cuts their hair like who, that in real life? Who wears their <laughs> hair in a point? Perfectly yeah. drawn. Yeah. Or wears it like a helmet like that? I love Yeah, the, it's true. Where she's running on the knife. That's badass. She, I think she looks way hotter with real hair. What do you think of the booby armor? It's kind of weird. Like, the it's just, <laughs> is that hard? Around the boobies, like, I don't know. Is it necessary? What about this bad guy, this ghost? Yeah, let's talk about ghost. I love the line where he's like, you gave her wings and blasters? So you didn't have that tech when you made my suit? Michael Douglas is like, no, I had it. <laughs> it's great. So let's talk about ghost. You get a quick shot of perhaps the villain, perhaps a sympathetic individual. We don't know. Who is ghost? Uh, this is, uh, character, who's he, ghost? What do you guys Tony know about Stark ghost? villain? He's an Iron Man villain. It's Patrick Swayze. Yes, he's also Patrick Swayze making clay from the beyond. Yeah. He's also, no, you're absolutely right. He is from the Iron Man comics, and he's a, he's a male. He's a man in the comics. Oh, he's a man. This ghost is, is a female played by Ready Player One and Tomb Raider's Hannah John Kamen will be oh. this ghost. Uh, and the uh, Hollywood Reporter wrote another great article. They think this is going to be the MCU's next breakout character because this character is in tune with the times. It is a corporate spy who works between corporations to of, take so them she, down. This is a villain? Well, yeah, we said. don't know. Okay. It could start out bad. You know, the, the movie left off with uh, the corporation mismanaging, you know, their tech. And, you know, like uh, fucking uh, what's that show with Remy Malek? Uh, just anonymous and people hating corporations and hacking. Like this seems very topical. He was created in 1987. Uh, and his suit makes him invisible and intangible. That's why it's he's called girl. Ghost. Makes her invisible. Her. This one is her. But in the comic books, he was also part of the Thunderbolts 2006. Very violent, paranoid, anti-capitalist who wanted to destroy all comp- corporations. You've never seen his face. And he may be part cyborg. That's what he is in the comics. But will he be a ba- will she be a bad guy or is she going to end up helping him out? Is there another antagonist that they're not showing us? This Ooh. is one of those movies, be especially since I don't know a lot that about Ant Man, the character, yeah. in the, yeah. like the comics. Like yeah. I have no idea what's going to happen. That was I love those. That usually works out pretty good because then like even you, the villains, like even yeah. like Black Panther, I'm yeah. kind of aware of like some like Mbaku or whatever. Yeah. Man, I have no and, idea. Uh, no longer. Uh, Anthony, and as much as many comic books I've read, I'm with you too, because I did not read a lot of, of early Avengers or A-Man or Black Panther. So I kind of love just getting to learn these versions of these characters, and I don't care if they change it, because I don't know who they are. It's great. It's <laughs> well, the, it's cool because all the I pressure's mean, off. they did a gender swap. And, yeah, and, and, it doesn't matter. But they, but they cast this girl in it from uh, Killjoy's Hannah John uh, Kamen, this might be like a big role for her. She's like uh, like a British chick, and uh, 
she's she's uh, I think she's mixed and she's she's kind of really hot. So hey, uh, it'd be cool to see her. Let's see her look on, her up. Uh, I mean, she's in uh, three big tentpole movies this year. Ready Player One, Two yeah, Later. Yeah, it's going to be her thing. And uh, hey, man, that's crazy. Yeah, then then you posted this article about Destiny fans being upset yes, over. Let's talk about that. Over that. Does this look like the Hunter character from Destiny? It does. It does. But I mean, like uh, <laughs> you could see that the Marvel character came out way before it, so it's that's a, that's so a non issue. Destiny ripoff ghost. It is funny that Destiny has something called a ghost that oh, drives you right. around, that assists you. Yeah, and then it looks like the the Hunter armor. But I mean, it's just a coincidence. Yeah, they're getting chirped on Twitter. People yeah, like, is this Ant Man or Destiny Three? So and, it does look a lot oh, like it. That does kind of look like that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to see if you thought it looked. Oh, that's Hannah Joy came in. Yeah, she's in Black Mirror too. She's been in two episodes of Black Mirror. Uh, Such a that, fantastic show that Black Mirror. I've watched yeah, so many episodes. You can't even. Get, I can't even stop you from watching <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I can't contain myself. That <laughs> fucking Bro, show. Do you even podcast? <laughs> I know. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, so, dude, Ghost sounds like uh, this is going to be a very topical villain for Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I think this is the first movie where there's like a female title in the title where she gets a uh, top billing almost. Right. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Ant-Man oh. and the Wasp well, coming they, out. Well, they're making a uh, Black Widow film now, right? Well, they're starting to work. Yeah, they're starting to work. You probably talked about this while it was out. That's correct. They, yeah. uh, they got a writer and uh, there's movement. Long overdue. Maybe they could do like a team, like a, a female, all the female no, awesome don't, badass don't characters. Do that. No, 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 you don't want that. You don't want like no, a team. Because it, it's, it's these female characters deserve their own movie. They do. It's they just do. like like doing everything and just putting it all together. So you're like, oh, we don't have to do a female Isn't that movie. Sparrow, we talked about it because that Sparrow. Yeah, movie so Anthony, let me ask you this: the the her story, which is that movie Red Sparrow, is and we've seen it in the Femme Nikita. Like it's already been done. What do you want to see her origin? Which is kind of like we've seen that already in a lot of things. What would what would you want to see in a Black Widow movie? A team up with Hawkeye? Something? Nah, I. It could I I don't mind seeing her origin. I don't also mind seeing where her character spins off of Infinity War and then going from there. Ah. I like I like the idea of just doing a, a movie where I mean, really is she even less so than Hawkeye? She's the only one with really no power. Yeah, she got nothing. She's just a, a fucking woman, a spy, hanging out with you all these so, superheroes. Just like folks. a day in the life movie. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they, they they repeat ideas all the time. How many times have we seen Dances with Wolves? I know, but just the you know young girl indoctrinated into a Russian spy becomes a hitman. And, and I just think there's been like been ten movies that, yeah, have, that it have, has been done. done. So, done maybe, so then don't do an origin, right? I don't think they should do an origin. It should be like a, a mission. Well, she's gonna be ten ten years older. And if there's <laughs> anything we know about white girls, they age quick. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <not> true. <laughs> To start like a Mission Impossible type franchise with Black Widow, where she's just going on missions. You can she's do got that. like a team and have fucking Tom Cruise break his ankle. Every How about scene. you do this? Just something off the wall. You have her lead fucking shield. She's the leader. Oh snap! She t- like Nick kill Nick Fury and she, she's yeah, in she's, charge. She's the new charge. Oh, that's not bad. That's a good one. Is that even yeah, have a in Russian comics? in charge of the American? Uh, yeah, no. have a Russian yeah. in charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever this movie is, we're not going to see it uh, until after like 2020. So whatever. I got have, shit you know what? And you cast Putin as Putin, and you just you go re- all the <laughs> way Russian. <laughs> Might as well. Julian right. Assange is in there helping out. Uh, let's get all the weird foreign guys in there. Yeah, and just say get Tommy Wiseau right. up in that shit. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau, yes. Here's the team: Putin, Black Widow, Tommy Wiseau. Call it Russian Thunderbolts. There oh shit! There you go. <laughs> we're done. Make it happen, Hollywood. And with that, we're gonna take a quick the break. unexplainables. Uh, the unexplainables. <laughs> There's your title. Make it so number one. We take a quick break. Play some promos. We'll be right back with some more news. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake from the History of Bad Ideas. And we'll get back to your regularly scheduled program here in just a second, Geek listeners. But we do a weekly podcast called The History of Bad Ideas. Yeah, well, we'll discuss things like television or movies or music or games or any other thing that falls into our geek-related uh, podcast knowledge. You can find us on uh, Geek Life Radio Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Or radio hyphen blitz 
Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, or you can listen to us whenever the hell you want on iTunes and Stitcher. Check us out. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. You know, I mean, usually whenever people start talking about doing a you know, remake of Lord I mean, of look, Rings, here's like, the point that I'm trying to make here, okay? You know, Barb this is isn't what I don't that understand. important. I mean, how I mean, could I they have made a movie this bad? I, mean, I know everyone's like, hiding out there. Who said that, that, that this was okay? Look at the adaptation. I can't ignore it. Yes, there have been many, but I'm talking about the Come get belligerent on Popcorn Prattle Film Talk Podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Podbean. You'll be glad you did. Hello, this is Storycrafter Mike from the Steamrollers Adventure Podcast, and you're listening to the Jack and Nerd Podcast. Hey, Michael, between the two of us, I think I am the Jack. You're actually more like Rug Boy. Nope. I am Totes the Jack. Okay, then who are the Pittsburgh Steelers? A marauding band of aliens who use giant laser cutters to carve off a slice of Pennsylvania to take back to their home world. Hey, Rug Boy, if you want to come moonlight on our show, we just had an opening. What? Let's go another the next bullshit article that we have to do. <laughs> hey, listener, if you've been enjoying the show, there is a place where you can get more show and help us out. Uh, visit our fan club. Join the fan club at jogginner.com slash Patreon, and you get access to bonus content, an exclusive RSS feed with more bullshit in it than you can shake a stick at. Well, not only do you get all that shit, <laughs> yeah. which is it's all complete bullshit, yeah, you know, it's why fun. would you want to listen? But yeah. you actually help fund the show. In, in yes. real, real talk, you actually help fund the show and make it so that we can keep it, keep it going and keep it free. You kind of become a producer, and you help us keep the show going and and, and uh, keep the geekery happening. So it's the first show of the month. Uh, Ooh, I like wake to up, think. Wake up, wake up! It's the first of the month. First show. It's the first show of the month. Also, yes, we're recording this on the first of the month, though. and it is the first of the month. Uh, but I, I say that because I like to thank everyone by name. So I'm going to thank all these people. I'm going to read this this list as fast as I can. Read it as fast as you can so you don't understand the names. Yeah, no, of these I, I can read it fast and enunciate. You'll no, see. But I don't want people to know. Oh, what, oh you don't want people to know? No, I'll just can we do slur all the names together? Yeah. One breath. Here we go. Thank you to all these fabulous patrons. John Magad, Lisa Morrison, Bonner Demling, Travis Holton, John Seaford, Gabriel Bosco, Anthony Apodaca, Jimmy Graben, Joe Henry, David Zika, Jimmy McPike, Wes Cranford, <laughs> Matthew Lawrence, Ron Hans, Adam Morris, Blading Caribou Studio, Stephen Tran, Joe from work, Steve Morrison, Matt Del Howard, Place to Hang Your Cape, Philip and on, and one time donations from Brett Zafka and Del Paul. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 that was awesome. One breath. That's the <laughs> most breath. impressive thing I've ever he- ah, seen or heard from you. I got skills, boy. I One breath. Get, I would hey, have look, taken like seven. No, you should have done that in triplets with a, with a trappy behind oh, you. Oh, I should be like, <laughs> Jama, God, Lisa, Morrison, Bonner, Demling, Travis, Holton, John, Seaford, Gabriel, Bosco. <laughs> no, stop, uh, stop. Fuck stop. off with that triplet bullshit. You can take that in your mumble rap and hit the fucking dirt, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, fresh, new school stale. Just like my boy, Mr. Throwback Thursday says. Anyways, back into the news. Thank you, guys. Join that list. I will read your name real fast. Just like that. It'll be lots of fun. Jockinner.com slash Patreon. Our next article comes to us from Variety. This is going to be great. (laughs) A live action Superman prequel has been ordered straight to series at DC's upcoming digital streaming service. Somebody touch my spaghetti. Oh. From Warner Brothers Television, DC Entertainment, the series titled Metropolis, set in the famous comic book city before the arrival of Superman. It's going to follow Lois Lane and Lex Luthor. Nobody cares as unless they she's investigate naked. the world of fringe science and expose the city's dark and bizarre secrets. It's got a 13 episode order for 2019, and it's from the people who brought you Guess What Show. Gotham. Gotham? Absolutely correct. Really? So. Comment first of all. <laughs> Does anybody I want my comments? No one's gonna watch this. It's gonna be a complete <laughs> waste of time. The fuck. Unless Lois is naked, that, and maybe something. That, and she's hot. All of what you just said is literally what you said. What the fuck? Like, I don't see what like Gotham. At least they've got Can that you play wack- the clip. Yes. What you just said. Oh, there you go. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's it. Like yeah. Gotham, like uh, Gotham inherently, you could go wacky zany like they have because characters are wacky. And, it works. Yeah. But, but 
Metropolis? So is it, this is going to be like an X Files show with Lex and and Lois working together? What the fuck? Without what the fuck? Before Clark Kent, look. The, now this and this is the second Superman prequel show that's coming out. They already got Krypton. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, so about fuck. his great great grandfather before fucking Krypton. What the fuck? Why can't you just give us a goddamn Superman TV show? Too expensive. No, why? Do you look at the? It's only interesting in the context that you're watching Superman. Right. But like, you could do Superman stories. Why don't you do like? Remember Shadow of the Bat? Uh, like the comic yeah, book series yeah, yeah, yeah. that would tell you stories about like Batman that were all out of context and all yeah, different they were times like, and stuff. Couple story arcs just in yeah. in, in, in a, I would love that. No, Anthony, I don't think it's too expensive. We got Supergirl. They showed us Superman. That's the true. budgets, the the CGI for TV is getting better. There's no why can't you just fucking make a Superman TV show? Who cares if there's already Henry Cavill and the other guy? You know Get why? Tyler Hoechlin. Because Superman, there's too much money to be made to be spending it on him doing a TV show. To waste show. it on TV. Yeah. Yeah, but people will still watch the TV show. They're still going to go see the movie. Hmm. I, I think that if you um, oversaturate the market, you, you take away something from Superman being an event at the movies. If he's everywhere. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we got two flashes. That seems to work. Yeah, <laughs> sort of but the, out. you're gonna see when this flash movie goes in the shit box <laughs> you, that that uh that you're gonna be like, oh, that's why. Yeah, but- we have a cool we have a cooler flash than we do on the fucking screen. We why do. are we gonna go see this ju- jerk off now? Yeah. This so. yeah, this definitely doesn't sound. Uh, I'm not interested. How about that? No. No. Yeah, I think DG's, it's a, DC's digital. So what, they have a digital service. They, they're starting. That's that streaming service that they're starting. That's also going to have the uh, Young Justice Outsiders, the live action Titans, and they're doing like an adult animated oh, Harley yeah. Quinn uh, cartoon. See, like the thing that's very frustrating. Okay, like I'll take Krypton over Metropolis any day because at least it's got enough space between that and Superman that you're not. Fr- you know that he's not coming anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But Metropolis, like Superman could be in Metropolis. Like there's no reason for him not to be in Metropolis. And that's fucking frustrating. It's like watching Smallville. Yeah. And he's got yes. the powers. Yes. He's not Superman. Yes. For 10 years, you're waiting for this motherfucker. Or Gotham. Yeah. Gotham is, uh, yeah. Where every villain is there and Batman's not. And you're just like, this would be great if Batman was actually here to yeah, deal with so these fucking people. Th- that's what the thing is. It's like, if, if it's Batman without Batman, then it's fucking not worth doing. And this is going to be Superman without Superman. Like, do you, does anybody really care about Lois? And Lex, and Lex is like, is he a good guy? Like, why is he working with Lois? This whole thing is so stupid. None of it makes sense. Moving on. I just had to call out the fucking insanity that they, they they're Supergirl, making. They have Supergirl, which is Superman without Superman. Yeah. But at least they have somebody kicking some ass. And Supergirl's pretty good, and there's a Superman and the Supergirl. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this next story, we talked about this in the last rugdown, but I wanted to mention this on the show because uh, I love this uh, diversity and reimagining of one of my favorite 80s horrible campy superhero shows called The Greatest American Hero. It was memorable. It was memorable. It was William Catt, Robert Culp. Basically, that setup was uh, aliens come down and drop off the super suit in a, in a case, and this goofy teacher finds it, but he loses the manual the instructions, so he doesn't know how the suit works, and it's just him futzing around, flying into things. Hilarious stuff. He's just crashing into shit all the time. Yeah, he, the little, little kids are telling him how to, like, jump and fly, because he's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So ABC is rebooting this, but they are rebooting it. They're reimagining this with a female lead, which is great, but it gets better. Uh, check this out. The reimagining of Greatest American Hero centers around Mira, a 30-year-old woman who loves tequila and karaoke and has spent her life searching and failing to find meaning, much to the chagrin of her traditional Indian American family. An inexplicable event occurs that will change the course of Mira's life forever. She is entrusted with the super suit to protect the planet. Uh, they're doing kind of Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel on Greatest American Hero. This is, I think this is a great example of like bringing in diversity and rebooting something and it works because nobody cares. I, I think it's cool, but as long as they don't have stretchy powers. No, stretchy <laughs> powers never work. No. I'm leaving well, all of this one to you guys. I had nothing about this. Yeah, this is before your time. Yeah. But yeah, well, look, uh, Greatest American Hero was on for a season. Uh, the people who watched it during that time remember it very well because it was like a comedy. It was like, you don't take it that seriously as a dude who, who it was like a, a, a bunch of tropes that they decide to fuck around with. So uh, I'm like down for this. I want to check it out. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not a complete. I think they should 
figure out the line of the humor, if they can do it like the tick, like the way that the tick is ah, being yeah, done on Amazon, yeah. that's cool. If they go to the like powerless level where it's just retarded and like, uh, <laughs> Don't do like overly comedic, like no, it's it's funny because she's trying to use the suit and do shit, right. and, and there's real shit. That needs to happen, and she just doesn't know how to use it, and that's the funny part. And I mean, it. like, you just have to look at Miss Marvel. The, the when the book first started, like, there was great moments of Kamala Khan, like trying to figure out, like, her hand got big, and she didn't know what was going on. She didn't know she could get big and fly. Uh, those moments are great. The reason, like, this uh, gets me is I just as a kid. There, you saw a guy in a suit and a cape flying, and you're like, this is a superhero show. Like, that's all we had. There wasn't much, and it was silly and campy, but I always love, and it has the greatest theme song ever, uh, which everyone knows. So I'm excited for this reboot way to put a female in there, way to make it an Indian American family. Uh, all good stuff. Good moves on that one. All around. It, rug boy approved. It, it's, it is rug boy. Rug boy approved. Okay. Moving on, you know how much we love to swear, and I love TV uh, that swears, shows that swear. What the fuck are you talking about? Fuck off. All right. <laughs> and I've noticed, I've noticed on Sci-Fi and USA, a lot of these shows are uh, letting uh, the, the, the F-bomb through, and now they've officially said uh, that uh, from an article from Geek Tyrant, USA and Sci-Fi are getting the reins loosened on vulgarity. The NBC companies will now allow the programs to say fuck uncensored. And what could be a turning point in American television? Now, look, English television, they do. They swear there's boobies, there's sex, there's yeah, violence. Yeah, there's nothing new in Europe. No, and I think that makes more sense where here we're so uptight about showing sex and swear words, but we'll show a guy's head blowing up on primetime. No problem. Who, you know, who who is the asshole that decided that this is what words are appropriate and what aren't. They're called the. You, you've given power to words that are just yeah. fucking words. Yes. Had you never censored them in the first place, it right. wouldn't. That's why, like, sometimes, like, Europeans are a little more adjusted with the swear words because uh, it's not a big well, deal. I think it's a thing that, especially now in this time where the internet is just, there's no governing on the internet. You go on YouTube, yeah. you hear people yeah. swear all day. So it's like. Okay, now t- regular TV. Like, w- why why can't I see this on paying paid cable? It, seem, right. it seems silly, and if you look at all the streaming it shows, seem real? No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like it just seems soft. And now they got to compete with the streaming shows, which there's no ratings on these streaming shows. Like, you could be watching what you think is like a a, a family movie, and they just start swearing. It's hilarious. So, like, they got to compete uh, with oh this content God. that's out there. <laughs> what happened? No, you made me think of something. I don't know if I should even talk. Oh about it. boy! <laughs> no, it's just there's a show. There's a show on Netflix yeah. called Devil Man Cry Baby. Oh, it's, okay. a, it's an anime. Okay. So I put this shit on. I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna be probably gonna be satanic or whatever because it's Devil Man. Dude, there's just fucking crazy fucking sex all over the place. <laughs> I'm like, if a little kid clicks on this, it's thing a cartoon in front of his parents. Yes. I mean, th- there's a scene where they he goes, they go to a nightclub. And there's people fucking all over the nightclub, like tits flopping around. <laughs> oh, really? no. I'm like, well, I can't watch this. This is too fucked up. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, it looks like a cartoon that you would let your kid play. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. that looks fine. Go ahead. Watch this. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, oh shit. So I'm saying like, that's to di- like the, uh, having like a, a kid going through your Netflix and picking that. And you're like, OK, what the fuck is? Th- oh, shit. Oh, you can't, un- shit. You can't unsee that. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw tits as a little boy. How? What was it? What What was it in? Do you remember? I think it was. Uh, it was a movie with Sylvester Stallone and uh, Sharon Stone uh, when they were uh, like together. Oh, that was the Demolitionist or so, uh, some, uh, yeah, Demolition some action no, no, movie. No, 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 no. The uh, t- <laughs> fuck. Now I gotta Hold look on. it up. It's not the Demolitionist. It's the. Demo- it's not Demolition Man. No, not Demolition no, Man. Definitely it's not. The- that. Something he 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 he's a guy who blows shit up. Uh oh 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 oh. Uh, uh well, there's demolition man, the specialist. It might the, be that. It might be the specialist. Yeah, if it's the one with, yep, that's the one. Yeah, that's it, Sharon Stone, the specialist. Okay, so Sharon Stone boobies from the specialist. Yep, yep. You see that? And, first and as Rug Boy says, once you see them, it never. You never erase that. And there, uh, right at that moment, I was like, I kind of want to see that again. I remember the I remember the first movie I ever saw boobs in. Okay, and it's such a like an obscure movie. Yeah, uh, I think it's called The High Cost of Living. Okay, you ever heard of this Wait. movie? Ah, it's about chicks that decide to rob uh, 
a, a contest. You know those contests where they have like it, it's like a big bowl that has money in it and flows around, and people have to get the money. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They grab the cash well, or whatever. Yeah, so <laughs> the way that they decide to rob this thing is they have one girl go on the other side of the thing and start stripping. In front of everybody, and then all the guys like rush to the other side while everybody's paying attention to her getting naked. Okay, they try to rob the fucking thing. <laughs> what? And that's the first time I saw boobs. Okay, I think my first boobs, <laughs> like how we got on this, was um, this, this is a, this is more this is better than the news that we're gonna yeah, cover. This is, okay, this is the memory I have. It's very faint, but way back in the early days of cable, there was something called on TV. Anybody remember on TV rugs? No. Okay, so literally, this was a wooden box with a knob and like a, a switch. <laughs> like this was the cable box, and my uh, I was there with my dad, and he was watching uh, the Stephen King movie with Christopher Walken, where he reads people's minds. What's that called? A uh, dead zone. Dead zone, right? He was watching Dead Zone, and then there was a part. But the girl was naked and my dad was like, don't look. And then like I put I covered my eyes. But then I remember peeking uh, like right next to him. And I think I remember seeing boobies. I think that was the first time. I like how everyone can remember the first time. Oh, you don't forget your first set of boobies. No, no you don't. I wonder if we can find that clip somewhere. Sharon Stone boobies. Not bad for a first set. I got it. I, no, got it. I was. I, I saw that. Like, yeah. Very good. I think my like my dad was trying to cover my eyes, but I was yeah. like, he he didn't do a very good job. <laughs> I saw it. You're like, I saw something. And, and then like afterwards, Save like it. my uncle wanted to watch the movie, and I was like, I can watch this movie. Let me watch it with you. My dad let me watch it. <laughs> got in a it's lot like, of what? trouble. We yeah. <laughs> oh, both got in a lot of trouble. Me and my dad. That's great. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> first boobies. Hey, listener, what was, was your first was boobies? Yeah. Right Send in. us. Uh, show at jockandnerd.com. Send us an email. What was your first boobies? Uh, we'd love to know. Okay. Uh, here's a hilarious article we can comment on and make fun of. Uh, from joeblow.com. As Nickelodeon prepares to embark on a bold new direction with the launch of Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animal rights organization PETA is asking Never for the network. Them. Never heard of PETA? No. They're asking for the network to reintroduce the heroes in the half shell as vegan. With the brothers preferring to dine on dairy-free pizza, there uh, they wrote a letter, and uh, the lady notes that people, including Nickelodeon's young viewers, their siblings, and their parents, are going vegan at higher rates than ever. She also states that pizza joints are following suit, especially in the Turtles' New York City home, which boasts vegan pizza from Two Boots. Uh, blah blah. Can you blah. play the clip, please? Holy shit! Everyone in this room is now dumber. For having listened to it, I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, yeah. it's a car fucking tune, Peter. Dude, like they are actual turtles I, being abused out there. Can I just say this? Yeah, go on a rant. Give us the rundown. Right like, Here's the rundown. <laughs> I have nothing against veganism. I don't. Okay, <laughs> let me just put that blanket statement out there. But that's a luxury. That's a fucking luxury. Correct. Like, if we were to have the apocalypse, like, tomorrow, and people were fucking hungry, they'd eat what, we, we can only be vegan now because we have the luxury of making fake fucking cheese. Absolutely. <laughs> All right? You know how many That's cashews, luxury. You know how many cashews right? you have now, to buy to make cheese? Now, live in a fucking sewer. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to go, oh, let me, fi- let me fucking find the, uh, a vegan restaurant because I need to be vegan. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, I've never, I don't even think turtles are vegan. I've never I think heard turtles of turtles eat other things. I've never heard it being described as a luxury, but it's very spot on. Yeah, that's that's a, that's that's a very makes, good way to explain he that. Makes a good that's a good point. Point. I, my my I'm friend, just my yeah. friend, one time said, <laughs> "I always use this because I have nothing against being vegan either." But uh, we didn't get to the top of the food chain eating leaves and shit. <laughs> we good, wouldn't be here. We would not be here as a species I mean, if we did not. Do whatever we did to survive. We, right. Like th- there was times where you couldn't in the middle of dead of winter that you couldn't eat. You had to kill something and eat it. We wouldn't be here as as human beings. Yeah. It's a luxury to be able to be vegan and have vegan cheese we, and stuff. Yeah, we've evolved as so, omnivores. Right. Do you uh, know how much it costs to buy the amount of cashews you need to make fucking cheese, vegan cheese? Like. Who's got fucking twenty five dollars to spend on a pound of cash? It's just like it it's ridiculous, and it's like not even helping the environment because the amount of money to farm all this stuff, it's just the same. You still have the same carbon footprint as everything. So I I I, I admire people who has the discipline 
and who want to like make a statement about the cruelty of animals or even just be healthier. Absolutely. But you can't just impose that on people. No, the point is PETA is fucking stupid. They're just idiots. What are you doing? Wasting like, your turtles. time. Turtles Jesus eat Christ. stuff. <laughs> they're not even real turtles. Relax. <laughs> I see what they're saying. Hey, okay, so funny sidebar. My sister, she's had um, some, she's uh, through her diet, she's had some health problems. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, she finally figured out something that works for her. She's been on this diet for a month. She feels great. She's got energy. Everyone's like, you look great. What are you doing? Here's what she eats. I shit you not. She's eating only ground beef and water. That's it. Cooked ground beef and water, nothing else. She is on the all meat diet and she fucking loves it. I like it. that diet. It, dude, that is a great diet. And she's like, you can eat other things, other meats. She's like, I just love ground beef. She's like, all my cravings for shit have gone away. I feel better. I have more energy. Now, whether it's that she's just eating beef or the fact that when you remove all this food, your body gets to heal. Which well, carbs and sugars are the worst yeah. thing for you. So whether it's the healing from just taking the food out. Or it's just eating beef. I don't know what it is. Probably a little well, bit. Well, there's bone. also probably the fact that she's just eating real food all the time. Yeah, no, she's always eating real food. But even with her, like the fiber and vegetables, like her, she, her body doesn't digest it. No, doesn't everyone's deal with body's them. different. Yes, yes. I would, yes. I wouldn't say just, just one blanket meat. statement. Yeah, just eat meat. <laughs> no. just eat ground beef and whatever she's eating. Nah, I don't agree yeah. with no, no, that I, either. It's different but, for everyone, right? Uh, which is yeah, you have to work. Do what works for you. That's yeah. why you forget when you diet, especially when you're like married and you're a couple. You're like, I've lost weight. Why isn't it working for you? That's a different body. Like well, it's not going to be the like same. for me. Like there's ectomorphs, endomorphs. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mesomorph. there's some people that are hard. Yeah, mesomorphs, yeah. hard gainers. There's people that put on weight just by looking at a fucking burger. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's just different I'm body. That's you. Yes, you're. Yeah. you're I'm yeah, supermorph. You're, you're megamorph. <laughs> I'm, e I'm egomorph, which is like yeah. planet size yeah. egomorph. Egomorph. I just make that up. Ah, ah. You have no, to no torso whatsoever. Your belly button exists in between ah, your nipples. Listen, I come from a short torso genetic <laughs> pool of people. That's all. We we're not we're not known for our torsos, <laughs> known for our powerful thighs. Your, and your our, belt and our, is basically around your neck. Uh, yeah, it's like a fixation. You kind of like it, don't you? So when I eventually decide to hang myself, it'll be very easy to get it done because <laughs> it's already there. So you keep pushing me, Anthony. <laughs> I gotta, <laughs> Jesus, oh, it yeah. got dark. That yeah, did. Moving on, there is a uh, documentary coming out. If you are a fan of the X Men. On Video On Demand, Accelerator Media released the official trailer for uh, Chris Claremont's X-Men, which is an upcoming documentary film that deals with the revitalization of the X-Men franchise, safe from cancellation by writer Chris Claremont, who spent almost 20 years on the series. Uh, I watched this uh, trailer. While it is a little low budgety. I love documentaries like this. I love the story. Think about it, dude. 1975, X-Men is dying Chris Claremont, nobody wants it. And in the trailer, he's like, Chris was like, I'll do it. And he's on the book for 17 years till 1991, writing the most iconic. I just uh, giant looking, size X Men, right? Giant size X Men. Just, you should give it a read again if you haven't read it in a while. Yeah, it's just the, really the fucking soap awesome. opera dynamic of every issue, every month. The Dark Phoenix. Well, I mean, he, he's the guy that brought in the. I mean, everyone thinks of X Men and they think of diversity when it was really just a bunch yeah. of white prep boys yeah. together. Yeah. Before he brought he in got Storm there. and uh, Blue People. And he brought in Storm, uh, Nightcrawler, um, he, uh, Wolverine. Uh, what's his Thunder, the, Whatever his name is. Who's a Colossus? Like all these foreign characters. I mean, he made X Men the biggest comic book franchise in history. Still, Thunderbird. Forty years Thunderbird. later, there the shit go. is still uh, is still good. Thunderbird. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad he's getting uh, a little bit of a, of a doc while he's still alive, so we can get some interviews. Find out more about what went uh, what through his mind, but I love I love docs like this. It will be out uh, February sixth on video on demand platforms. Make sure you I'm check it. I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah, make sure you check it out. Bells on rugs. Remember in our sins and wins. One of our wins was uh, comic book buyouts, like Netflix right. buying Miller World, and and Sony got the rights to a lot of Valiant characters. Well, the sale for Valiant is complete. DMG Entertainment has acquired Valiant Entertainment. The oh, comic, so they bought they the actual bought, company. Yes, and DMG uh, is the company involved with movies like Looper and Chappaquiddick, but they bought Valiant Entertainment. Uh, wow. DMG is run, uh, run by founder and CEO Dan Mintz, already had 57% stake in Valiant, but made a strategic move, and now they can blow this out, and it does mention that... Uh, Sony uh, Sony has a couple of things, and they got a couple of other titles at other studios. 
Um, so get ready to see. They're making a push. They're trying to compete. They want to be the third biggest universe to compete with. Well, they got to catch up. It's yes. been. They're, they're, I mean, look, DC won't be hard to beat. No, it won't. <laughs> so they can get number two really easily if uh, they if DC keeps torching all of their IP. So Valiant, it says Valiant has a robust library of two thousand characters. Who's the most famous a lot of Valiant great ones. So the big ones: Exo Man of War, Bloodshot, uh, Ninjak, Harbin- Harbinger, Shadow Man, Archer, and Armstrong. Eternal Warrior. Eternal Warrior. Man, this, uh, this got, is a real niche. Yeah, these are things that not... Turok. Oh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter, which is actually a really Turok old character. Turok is like a video game I bought. Oh, you bought Turok? Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. was Valiant. Yeah, yeah. But Turok was a... It was like a... It's an old, old character, like from... Yeah, no, I, I played yeah. the video game. Yeah. I was no, like, I'm saying dinosaurs. like from the... Wasn't Turok like from the, the turn of the century almost? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Turok was like an old school yeah. pulp uh, thing, and then they bought the rights to that gold key. I think gold key. Was, I wonder if it was it. before or after Tarzan, because it's very similar, except he was... It's around that same pulp time. So they it's have... One game. Yeah, it was it? Oh, yeah. I played it I on N64, it, yeah. yeah. I remember when that came out. I really wanted you're, you're it. You were wielding weapons, and like you're, it was like bounty hunting dinosaurs. Were you, could awesome. you ride the dinosaurs? I forget. It was a long time ago. I nah, just there was there was like these like half dinosaur, half human people yeah. you had to kill. So uh, what they got going right now, Harbinger and Bloodshot are set up at Sony, and we talked in that show that Vin Diesel is attached to star in the Bloodshot movie, which would be pretty fucking awesome. Uh, Quantum and Woody is in development as a TV show with the Russo Brothers Productions. Doctor- That's going to be great. Quantum and Woody, what is that about? It's like a, uh, like almost like a Deadpool and a, a, with a, like a, is a it's a it's a duo, so it's, it's a like buddy a Deadpool action. Type. Yeah, it's a, like a Deadpool type, like crazy Comedy. guy, nice. and then like a, a straight lace dude, and it, it, the one guy's comic relief. Doctor Mirage uh, set up as a TV series with CBS Studios and the CW Network. Yeah, Doctor Mirage is like a, I think. It, well, I think they made it, they they gender swapped Doctor Mirage this time around. Oh, in the in the new one when uh, yeah. the Indian kid but bought before it. Before yeah. it was a Korean dude yes. who who became a ghost and was able to like kind of make himself like intangible. And uh, he could go into different dimensions and shit like that. So it was cool like that. It's like the, vi- like, like the vision almost. Uh, when we were at Pratt, a uh, uh, guy who drew Dr. Mirage, Bernard Chang, uh, was, uh, went to school there for architecture. Yeah, he's the guy who was the main guy and Dr. Mirage, the, the, the initial. I wonder if he's still working. Kept, he was. Uh, he was. He's still working. He's doing stuff for DC. He does stuff all the and time. And it was funny that he was an architect major and went into comic books. Like, and his interiors and buildings when he would draw them were fucking amazing. Yeah, because that was his wheelhouse. Yeah, he's so, really good. He's still really good. He's still doing it. All right, get ready for Valiant shit, everybody. And finally, some jock news. Hey. Ah, uh, our old oh, so our, much. Okay, it's WWE like, is not. Yeah, it's jock. like middle, middle, middle road w, entertainment. I would say WWE is closer to nerd than jock. It is oh, closer yeah. to comic book uh, geek stuff. Uh, our favorite, or, or just loser. Sorry, round of oh shit, oh, round shit. of Rousey <laughs> joining WWE to be yeah. a full time pro wrestler. Yeah, uh, she says this is my life now. First priority on my timeline for the next several years. This yeah. is not a smash and grab, and this is not a publicity stunt. No. Uh, Anthony, will this bring people over to WWE? Will this increase their viewership? Yeah, you, I mean, you'll get. It's obviously it's not going to be as as widely viewed as when she was at the peak of her powers and undefeated and the baddest woman on the planet. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was she's one of the biggest mainstream stars of of the past couple of years in terms of athletes, especially female athletes. So yeah, it's definitely going to help WWE. It's a smart move for WWE. Yeah, smart move for her. Yeah. Um. Just because it's that's beats getting punched in the head and getting like fucking dementia when you get old. Right. That's true to pretend to get punched in the I, head. I will, yeah. I will say though, my my opinion of her has changed a lot. Oh. I, I think she is a a fucking quitter. Yeah. I think I think she has a lot of mental issues. I think yeah. she has. A, I think she's a sore loser. Yeah. And I think this is weak as hell as it comes when it comes to being an athlete. Whoa! That's <laughs> fire. Yeah. Yeah, damn. I don't think much of her because she even to this day people at like she got interviewed by ESPN and they wanted to ask her about her losses and she's like I, I prefer not to talk about that. Well, when it comes to like <laughs> like people quitting the UFC, I mean Gina Carano quit. Yeah, uh, you know after she got beat, she did. And same thing. So same thing. I feel like the same thing. I just think that her fall from grace was like way more epic because she was such a her personality was so, so over like, the top. Yeah. 
But you know what? The WWE is not as bad of a step <laughs> to some of these UFC women than some of the shit that I've seen. I saw this movie called Fight Valley yeah. on fucking cable at night, like like midnight. It has like Misha, Misha Tate, oh, shit. Chris Cyborg, oh, uh, I don't, Holly Holm. Yeah, it's probably really bad, isn't Wait, this it? Is it's like the a scripted it looks like someone movie? filmed it on their iPhone. Oh, my God. I, I remember it's when that was so being filmed. Bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, shit. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. So I'm like, okay, well, at least she's not doing, at least Rousey's not doing that type of low-grade shit. She, she, that was like horrible. Her and Gina both have been in like mainstream films, and both of them are awful actresses. So <laughs> as yeah. far as- Gina was uh, her, in Deadpool, right? Gina was in Deadpool. She yeah. was in Fast and Furious. Okay. Uh, so was Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is also in the the- that remake of Entourage, but she's awful. Like she's a terrible actress. So <laughs> in that sense, yeah. WWE um, might not be her best thing. I mean, she might be athletic, but you do have to be able to act a little bit. And, yeah. And she's awful. You got, you got to pull it off. So I'm I telling found, you, she's bad. There's a, there's a, so this is my question. So I found this interesting article from vice sports headline. Ronda Rousey presents the same problems for WWE as she did UFC, I guess she came out at this Royal Rumble wearing Roddy Roddy Piper's trademark leather jacket. Right, right, right. So is she going to be a good person or a heel? And how are the people already in the WWE, the women there, are they going to accept her? Or are they going to be like, this fucking bitch comes in, steals the spotlight, she's a quitter, what the fuck? Uh, 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 well, they'll have to accept her because she can kick any one of their asses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she can fight for real. She can actually fight point. for real. Um, That's a good point. Didn't think about that. I think she'll probably start out as a good guy and then like her personality will wear on people and she'll be she's naturally actually like kind of a b yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. if you listen to her promo like her yeah. stuff when yeah. she was in the ufc and she'd talk about how she's the baddest woman ever and she'd go like she was like very very polarizing so i think that works better as a bad guy did you see the, i'm gonna switch the subject okay yeah. speaking of bitches yeah. and people getting taken down yeah. uh, did you see the uh what do you think of rose nama Yunus? i love rose nama Yunus. what um, is that english she is Lithuanian. Ooh, she's is she's she? yeah, she's Lithuanian, but she's born here, so she's just Lithuanian descent, I believe. Oh. But she's great. Uh, she's fighting Joanna Janjacek again, who was that was one of the biggest upsets of the year uh, back in, in New York. And I she, can't believe that you said her name correct. Oh, yeah, well, she's Polish. <laughs> These I'm, are this is I'm MMA. Part Polish, and this is he, MMA. Yeah. And this is my this is my wheelhouse right here. Yeah, yeah, he can he can pronounce the Polish words no problem. Oh, yeah. and, and Filipino yeah. words. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The, the Rose Namus is awesome. They're gonna have a rematch. Um, that'll be a huge fight. They're fighting in Brooklyn uh, in like April. So that's going to be a really good fight, too. You know what? This is great to go into this next segment I got real quick. I just wanted to do uh, it's a recommendation thing, but I'm calling it. Hey, here's what's good. Anthony, what's good in MMA right now? Let us know what here's what's good. What's good in MMA right now? Uh, not much. No. Um, so that rematch is going to be that rematch is going to be good. That same card is also um so Conor McGregor, you've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, he's the 155-pound champ, but they're still trying to figure out what the fuck he's going to do next. So they're having another title fight for the same belt oh, that geez. is now going to be, I guess, promoted as the real champ, which is Tony Ferguson and Khabib Nurmagomedov, okay. who's from Dagestan, <laughs> Very, Russia. Ooh, very good. Uh, good that's going to be an awesome fight. Yeah. Um, the other big news, I guess, coming out of UFC, uh, Daniel Cormier who's the light heavyweight champ, is going to fight Stipe Miocic, who's the heavyweight champ. Uh, it's like a super fight, so that's going to happen in July. Ooh, super fight. Other, other than that, there's really, I mean, unless you're hardcore, there's nothing for the mainstream fan. All right, I got another question. Who do you got for the Super Bowl? Oh, for the Super Bowl, the Patriots. All right. Yeah. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, they're the best team. You got, gonna... the, you got the best coach and the best quarterback of all time. Of all time? Yeah, man. Six, if he wins this, it'll be six Super Bowls. He's oh. wow. It's he's like a, he's a little bit like a machine from what I've seen. He is. He is. Man. The thing is, too, is like everyone like now hates on Tom Brady because he's well, in, I'm in New of, England. Yes, he's yes. From went to Michigan. He's yeah. really good looking. But he was no friends with Trump. Yeah, well, that too. But I, everyone forgets he was like a seventh round draft pick and supposed to be a nothing player and made he's himself 41. into this. He made himself into the best. So I'm just jumping on this bandwagon on on bagging on the Patriots because fu whatever. It's fuck fun. The Patriots. Yeah. yeah. Fuck so the Patriots. I kind of I kind of hope I the like Eagles the Patriots, win though. because uh, that'll be exciting. And uh, either way, it's a good story. If the Eagles well, win, if it's you're, a huge upset. If you're if you're from the New York tri-state area, you can't 
to root for the Eagles. Well, you nope. can't. Because the Eagles are assholes. You, know, you have to root for the Patriots then if you're up there. So you got, a, but you also hate the you Patriots hate too. Right. So you're basically a, in a lose lose situation if you're from the New York area. <laughs> yeah, if you're in New York, this is your worst nightmare. I do know that the yeah. last time the Eagles were in the Super Bowl, they lost to the Patriots. They lost to the Patriots. So this is a great storyline right there. And the Patriots lost the Super Bowl, though, didn't they? They lost like two Super 10 Bowls. years ago. Oh, they, they lost, lost a couple. Two. Mm. Yeah. Well, they the can't. Giants so, both times. They lost to the Giants so both times. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible to take them down. And they lost to the Chicago Bears in the 80s, but Tom We're going to get a lot there. of trailers, too, uh, hopefully. Uh, you will get some trailers. Yeah. I think that the, the Han Solo trailers well, was I saw a thing, thing oh. that they're, they're going to do a teaser, and then the trailer is going to be released on Monday uh, during Good Morning America. That's what they've been doing, I think, lately with these. Yeah. They like release like a minute or right. like less, like a little teaser, clip. and then they'll yeah. be like, "Check yeah. out more online." I'm, yeah, I'm not. Uh, that's all right. That's that'll be fun by Monday morning. Plus, you guys, do you guys watch the Super Bowl? This oh, will come I, out while the yeah. Super Bowl is happening. But. Yeah, yeah. This will come out the day I will. I will watch. This is what's you know. It's what's on. It's a shared experience. Why not? It's an American. I watched, I bought some squares at I work, so I got something in invested. A fifty dollars. I watch you guys, when the Giants play. Are you guys more interested in the commercials? And all the extra stuff. I don't know. Last year, the commercials were really lame. And I like, uh, I, I stopped giving a fuck yeah, about all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, I, I get into it. Like, that that maybe into my, maybe my thirties, I gave a fuck, yeah, but right. then uh, I don't Halftime show could be interesting. I don't even know who's half Justin Timberlake. Well, he's not a bad pr- entertainer. Justin Timberlake. Hey, he's pretty good. Uh, he's just the first time since the Janet Jackson nipple incident. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll get another, was, uh, they incident. had him, uh, they did a press conference. No one asked. Show his penis yeah, maybe his no one asked out. him about it, which no? is kind of crazy. Yeah. He also said that he would never let his kid play football, which is like, wow. Wow. The wow. NFL is like, wow. We've, why the fuck do we book you and you say something like that? Shit. There's that. Have you seen that new film out about the concussions that uh, is really depressing and scary? And the NFL does what, not the movie like called it. Concussion. I no. It's called. Uh, or, yeah. Uh, it's shit. called My Brain is Made of Dog yeah. Shit. It's called CTEs <laughs> Are No Good. It's well, a concussion what, NFL uh, documentary. What's football. recently come out, I mean, now that we've gotten onto this subject, what's <laughs> recently come out is not the, the big blows that knock you out that are causing the CTE, it's the accumulation of the little blows. So the stuff oh, that, where oh, you're just tackling. The little hits. The little hits that all. So, yeah, football is, uh, it's in a bad, I mean, it's, 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 it's heading to a bad place. Yeah, the, Not with that XFL, though. Oh, oh there you go. That Enjoy the a, XFL. Kid, send such your kids. a bad idea. What is the name? Is it? Oh, I can't find. Ah, there's a special. There's a movie, and it's got everybody freaked out at the NFL because it does really show you what damage is being done and how bad it is. Uh, Rugs, you got to Here's what's good. What's good to you? Jesus Christ. Uh, what did I see that was good? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> Nothing's good. I saw, okay, I'm going to tell you about this fucking movie. It's not good. <laughs> okay, here's what's right? not good. I'm, I'm just saying it's not good, but you ha- I, you almost have to see it because it's so fucking retarded. <laughs> All right? There's a movie on Amazon called uh, Brawl in Cell Blo- Block 99 or something. Okay. It stars Vince Vaughn as this, like a guy with like a shaved head yeah. with a cross tattooed on the back of his head that is like a drug runner. Yeah. A former drug runner that was trying to go straight, but he couldn't make make shit happen. So anyway, he comes home one day and he sees that his wife is cheating on him, and he gets really pissed at her. And you think he's gonna start beating her because he's like a hillbilly, you know, like he's like a dude from like you know from wherever. So he tells his wife to get out of the car, go in the house. Yeah. And then he proceeds to beat up the fucking car. Okay. All right. He starts okay. hitting the car. What did the car do? With his bare hands. Okay. And then he rips like the the fucking the thing the hood off the car and throws it like a frisbee, like like Lou Ferrigno in the Incredible Hulk. Does he have superpowers? No. <laughs> okay. He what the fuck? And I'm like, I sat there and I'm watching this. I'm like, this is a Nicolas Cage movie that he, Nicolas Cage isn't in. What? Uh, and I'm what? Like, this is a movie where where Vince Vaughn's like, I'll do a Nicolas Cage movie, and then now he's doing this movie. What would you so score this? What would you score this percentage wise out of a hundred? What would you score this movie? Like it was slow in places, yeah. in like a lot of places yeah. that it didn't need to be. Yeah. But there is parts of this movie where Vince Vaughn just takes a guy's arm and like snaps it in half. And like the arm just like snaps like a twig. 
and it's like he, he steps on people's faces and they explode. <laughs> okay. It's just what fucking fuck? insane. It's so bad. Give me a rating because I'm going to tell you what it's rated on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know. I'm, I mean, it's like watching like uh, The Room. It's like The Room wow, for bad. like. <laughs> I mean, you The Room is the, god awful. You want to know what the RT score is for this movie? What is it? 92%. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> It's 92%. I would watch this movie and be seriously disappointed based on this score, wouldn't I? What's the average critic rating? 7.6 out of 10. Oh, wow. That's still a solid 73% audience. Dude, you just got to see him beat up the car. We're all in cell block 99 just to beat up the car. Uh, I'll give you one what's good, and then we'll read feedback and wrap it up. Uh, Yo, uh, Black Lightning? Very, I've oh, you watched the uh, yes. couple episodes? It's good. Yes, I've watched yeah. all. I caught up. It's a very good show, dude. It's gritty. There's lesbians in it. Very surprising. Oh, shit. Whoa. Yeah. Man. Like, they don't, <laughs> I like uh, that the, the, your first two w- w- reasons for why it's awesome is gritty and lesbians. Dude, there's hot lesbians. Oh, man. <laughs> you You're the watch. worst, dude. Uh, no, it's dude. It's it's really good. It's uh, He's learning his powers. Uh, the story is great. The girl's becoming... Uh, she's gonna get, get a costume. I've been enjoying it. I think it's a very good show. Very good, good. show. I will uh, check it out. That's good. Unlike, uh, very unlike CW, but I think it does. It is in the Supergirl universe. I think. Oh, it has to be. Not the flat, but not the Arrow and oh, Flash right. universe. The well, super- same, it, it's that is all still the same universe. But those are separate Earths. Right, 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 right. So I don't know. Well, maybe they'll tie it together. Uh, I also read this cool bit. The showrunner. Salim Akil, he talked about eventually trying to bring in Static Shock and a bunch of the other Milestone characters into this universe. Do it! That would be awesome. Like, Static Shock would make a lot of sense with Black Lightning. Like, his fucking uh, teenage they're psychic. They're similar. Yeah, it would be awesome. Well, yeah, they're both black guys with lightning power. With lightning power. <laughs> and one has a really silly light bright suit. But it's cool. He's show- Gamby is showing him how to like point and focus his shit. Uh, it's good shit. Check it out. And uh, I got one piece of feedback from Roberto Rivera, the love child of Jess Rivera and Rugberto Bambino. Is this a troll job? Is this guy real? No, this is a real no, guy. I know. I know he's real. He's, <laughs> this is an actual person. Roberto writes, hey, guys, huge fan from Denver, Colorado. Uh, as I was listening What's to you, dude? <laughs> well, dude, send me some shit, Roberto. I'll send you my address. He's doing that dabbing. Mail yeah, me some dab. Me some wax, yo. Suck, at, dude. <laughs> as I was listening to your podcast, I found my Super Nintendo. I thought a cool show idea might be to talk about old school superhero video games. Like the Ninja Turtles game was really fun. Anyways, thanks for all the cool shows. I'm excited to become a patron soon. Keep it up. Talking nerd. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Become a patron right away today. I, Do it. Uh, I responded to him personally, but I yeah. will say um, my favorite games growing up as a kid at the arcade were that Ninja Turtles game and the X-Men game. Oh, there were both those, uh, like, the four, four people yeah, side four scrollers. Yeah, four people at the same yeah. time side-scrolling, yeah, different levels and all that. that. Those are fun. That is just Double Dragon. That's, that's I'm a Street Fighter guy, though. Street Fighter. Oh, oh, street, street Fighter. Back in the I'm day. a Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat guy. Ah, uh, see, yeah, those games are fun, too. But the those side-swipe games, man, I don't know how much my dad uh, spent on those games. Like, letting me play at the arcade. I probably We probably spent oh, close to, like, 50 bucks. Cause would I would you wanna, play? I would, I'd play until the end. Oh, gee. Oh, really? But would you have a group? What, like, would you bring your friends or you would no, just do no. it by yourself? No, no. I would play and, and then it. people would jump in, but I would still stick around. Yeah. yeah. And you would finish the game at the arcade? If my dad would let me, yeah. How many fucking quarters did that take? I know. It's so many. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, I'm so old. Like, I-, I used to go to the liquor store down the street to play Super Mario Brothers. Oh, shit. And there was nothing what, wrong they, with, like, they a- had, like, a Nintendo out? No, no, they had an arcade machine oh, in the liquor it? store. Yes. Really? This they was, had Mario? Yes. This oh, was wow. a time of uh, at our life where nobody thought it was weird that they put video games in a liquor store. They're like, are you trying And to- little kids be just yes. walking like, in there. Why are you attracting kids to a liquor like, store? I'm here to buy a pack of cigarettes for my dad yes. and play around. And of I'm play. Well, that is now like, it's not even all that new, but that is now the thing for adults is arcades go to those with beer cades. Beer cades, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those I are mean, fun. I've, I've had a lot of fun at beer yeah. cades. Rugs, uh, give, me one, well, give me one old school v- superhero game you used to play. Superhero or, game? Or any video game. Well, I said I'm a big Street Fighter Street guy, Fighter. so whenever I went, when I went into an arcade, I would immediately play Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. So that's number one. Were you one. running it? 
was I kicking ass? Yeah, were you running you the guy? Oh, yeah. like, yeah. I was beating everyone. As soon as the Asian guy showed up, though, it was all over. Like, I, <laughs> I was, like, if there was like nobody Asian around the machine, <laughs> I was the man. But as soon as the Asian guy showed up, I had to like, I knew that it was like only a matter of time before he I always my hated ass. that one dude who was running the machine and he'd be and he would just beat everyone. And you're like this motherfucker. Yeah, that was a, that was one of them. And uh, I like Marvel vs. Capcom when it came oh, out. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good game. That was a great. That's yeah. also like in the Street Fighter vein. Yep. Uh, what else? I liked uh, fucking... That was, I think that was it. I think those are my my big games that I played. I will yeah. finish with this. Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation. Best fucking game ever. Well, it's not that old school, though. I would it's say, not like, that old school. Also, oh, you're like, talking old, old games, like, from, talking about n- regular Nintendo there games? Was a, well, I can go back to Atari. Remember the superhero, uh, the Superman game on Atari? It was horrible, all blocky and pixelated. He's flying Remember around. Remember that first Spider-Man game yes, on Atari? Yes, they had a Spider-Man game. Did they? You could, yes, it was, was all so blocky pixels. You could climb up, you could swing, climb up walls. Oh, my God. I Plus, dude, have you, ever, have you tried to play Pitfall now? That game is fucking hard. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. impossible. I can't get past like the second board. I get eaten by the crocodile. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. Rugs, where can the listener find you? You can find me on Twitter at really rug boys. Come by and say what's up, bitch. Give him a poke and a follow if you want to hear more of me. Uh, go to, uh, subscribe to Ooh, Trivia this looks Geeks. Awful, the Spider Man Atari game. Yes, there was like, but wow. at the time, dude. When you saw that, you're like, your imagination. Wow, I can climb buildings. Yes, and your imagination is like, those red and blue squares, that's Spider Man. I'm Spider Man. Like, <laughs> it's so bad. Everything is so blocky. <laughs> but we loved it. And, yeah. like, it was alive. And that's all you do. Yeah. I, Check I, out Trivia Geeks Live, where I host a fun trivia podcast. Subscribe in Apple Podcasts, and most importantly, tell a friend. Spread the geekery. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. We'll hear you next time. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Oh shit! Jack and nerd. Stan Lee got rushed to the hospital. Oh no! Yeah, I saw that on our page. What mm. breaking news? He is ninety-five. Reportedly rushed to the hospital uh, Wednesday Needs night. To find more nurses after, to touch. <laughs> geez, oh, after shit. suffering heart trouble. Remember when we did the episode where we, his wife died, and then we started predicting when he would die, <laughs> and then you had to cut that out. Yes, that was do it for the Spider Man home review. I, something. I don't remember what it was. I was like, was this like seems oh, that's real poor taste. More, and that was that was two years ago. Yeah, Hollywood that, Reporter uh, says Stan is doing well, feeling good. He's staying in there for a few days for some checkups as hey a man, safety. The precaution. man's ninety five. Man's ninety five. Hospital sometimes things happen. Things happen. <laughs>